Hello world and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial where today it's time to get some target practice. That's right, today we're going to be covering some of the more advanced tools inside of immersive engineering. Not all of them, but some of them, starting with our mining drill here. We'll get to the revolver later on. The mining drill first needs a wooden grip. A wooden grip is made with one copper nugget and five treated wood sticks. You then need two of these wooden grips, one heavy engineering block and an iron mechanical component in order to make your mining drill. Now you only get one of these, of course. Now, the, in order to do anything with the mining drill, you must first place it inside the engineer's workbench. And when you've placed it inside, you'll see it looks like this normally. When you place it inside, you'll get a different UI, as you can see here. In here, you can put a head of some sorts, three different types of upgrades, and a shader if you wish. A shader is something that drops all over immersive engineering, and they come in all different rarities depending on when they're dropped by a mob or if you do something. They, 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 you get them for different things. But anyway, if we just take ourselves a shader, we can right click the air and open it up. This one's giving us the nether forge. We can then place this in the shader point and then we'll get a new skin basically. It's like CSGO skins, but for Minecraft. So let's cover heads first. There are two different types of heads. There's an iron drill head and a steel drill head. The iron drill head is made with four pieces of iron ingots and one iron block. And this will mine in a two by two by one area. It's got a mining level of redstone and it mines at a speed of six. Very similarly, you have the steel drill head built the exact same way, but with steel, of course, which is four steel ingots and a steel block. This will actually mine in a three by three by one area, it has the mining level obsidian and mines at a speed of 10. So let's use the drill as our example. Going over to the workbench now, we right click on it and inside we just put our drill head on here and now we can see we have our drill head on the side here. Now by itself this is pretty cool, you can't use it right now as when you hover over to the side you see that you need to actually put fuel in this. Now the fuel that you're going to need is any type of diesel or liquid fuel. In immersive engineering we're going to be using biodiesel, we have a barrel of it here. We have not yet covered in the series how to make biodiesel but that video will be coming up very shortly. So in order to actually fill up your mining drill, you're first going to need a jerry can. We have a jerry can right here. A jerry can is simply made with four buckets and four iron plates, as you can see here. Then we just simply fill it up, or fill up our jerry can. It holds 10,000 in total. We put our mining drill in our inventory and then the jerry can, and now it is full of fuel, as you can see here. Now going over to the side, now we're gonna do it here. We can see that the steel is doing a three by three area and it's pretty quick. Obviously this is stone and sand, but it's still quite fast. Now that we've broken a couple of blocks, if we open up our inventory and look inside the mining drill, we can see that we've used a little bit of fuel, about 50 millibuckets or so, and the drill head status at 99%. This means that the damage has been taken to the mining drill head. Now let's put the mining drill back in the workbench and discuss some upgrades. There are four different types of upgrades that are for the mining drill, two of which are shared with the buzzsaw, which we'll move on to shortly. The first of which is going to be the advanced lubrication system. The advanced lubrication system is using four iron ingots, one iron mechanical component, and two buckets of plant oil. Now, plant oil we also haven't made before, but that is done in an industrial squeezer. Just take any seed, put it in the squeezer, it will give you plant oil, and then you can just fill up inside of the UI. Now the advanced lubrication system will reduce the damage taken to your drill head every time you start mining blocks. So if we take this item over here, we come over to our little thing here and we can put it in any one of these three slots, we'll put it here. There is not really any visual representation that is installed, but this will now take less damage. Next up, we have the pressurized air tank. The pressurized air tank requires one empty bucket, one iron mechanical component, and four blue dye. And this will just give you one of these. Now, when you install the pressurized air tank, this will allow your drill to actually operate underwater. As it would with any other tools, you are generally pretty slow when you're underwater, but putting this inside of your drill will make it work as normal. Now the next component is the additional augers. This is essentially going to increase your attack damage because you can actually fight things with the drill and increase your mining speed. Now this can also be stacked up to three inside of your workbench and I'll show you what that means shortly. For this you're going to need three steel ingots and one iron mechanical component and you only get one of these. But if I just take this, they only stack in threes. If we now come over here, we can now place just one then we can actually place them on top of it. Now we have three. So as you can see, there's a little visible representation here. As you put one in, it gets a little bit bigger, two and then three. It's very, very slight, but it is there. But now we're going to mine things a hell of a lot faster. So now that we've got all these things in place, how about we go test it out round here? 
Back in survival mode, how fast are we going now? Quite a lot faster. We're now breaking it before the sand even falls. That's quite insane. Now there is one more upgrade when it comes to the mining drill and that is a fuel tank but we'll cover that when we show the, off the buzzsaw next but as you can see you will have to switch out one of these different items in order to actually get a bigger fuel tank. Now moving on to the buzzsaw, the buzzsaw is made very similarly to the mining drill, we're going to need two wooden grips, one steel mechanical component this time and two steel rods and this will give us our one buzzsaw. Now the buzzsaw it works the exact same way, you have to fuel it with a jerry can full of any type of diesel, here we've got some bio diesel and of course you can do a shader on it as well let's see what this shader is all about as well so when we place it in here we get a very similar ui except this time you only get two different upgrades and this top piece is the type of saw that you would like that's a pretty cool one so there are two different types of saw blades inside of immersive engineering for the buzzsaw. The first is the standard saw blade. This is going to require four steel plates and four steel ingots, and you only get one of these. The saw blade is purely for taking down anything that is made of wood and nothing else, but it will be very, very quick. The next saw blade is the rock cutter blade. The rock cutter blade is made with four diamonds and four steel plates, and this is essentially going to work on stone or any other type of block, but it's going to basically pick it up as it is. So essentially it's going to be some sort of um, silk touch upgrade without actually having silk touch. Now something else to notice is that when you have the rock cutter blade, it's not an upgrade to the saw blade. This will no longer work incredibly well on lumber. Now let's test this out. If we go over to a tree and we break the center spine, you'll see that I actually fell everything that is on top of it, which means that you don't really want to start on a branch first. You want to do it from the very bottom block and it will do everything that it's connected to. Then using the block cutter, it doesn't matter if we're doing it on dirt, as you can see, it works as a sort of silk touch effect, as you can see, which is pretty cool. But if we actually go over to a tree, we can see that it's quite a lot slower. So you definitely want to have two different types of blades with you. Now let's talk upgrades. There are three different upgrades that can be used inside of the buzzsaw. The first one being the large tank. This is the upgrade I spoke about that is also for the mining drill. This is going to require two red dye, two empty buckets, two steel ingots and a iron mechanical component and you only get one of these. And essentially what this is going to do is increase your fuel tank size of your tool. So this doesn't work as this works for the buzzsaw, the mining drill as well as the chemical thrower, but we won't be covering the chemical thrower today. So if we look inside of here, this holds 2000 millibuckets. If we now go over to our workbench, put this inside our machine, we can now hold 4000 millibuckets. Now you can only put one of these inside. As you can see, if I duplicate it, I cannot actually put a second one in. So this is what you've got. Another shared upgrade is actually the advanced lubrication system. We put this inside. Our saw blades will now take less damage when destroying blocks. Now the last upgrade is the blade quiver. This is going to require one industrial hemp fiber, two treated wood planks and two iron rods. And this is going to allow you to carry additional saw blades with you and on your buzzsaw. Now, of course, looking inside, this can only hold two different upgrades. So I'm going to take out our fuel tank. This will reduce it back to 2000 and then we'll put our quiver inside. We now can see we can open two more different blades. So inside of here, I'm just going to put two regular saw blades and you can see you got a visual representation of when you actually have this installed on the side of your drill or your saw rather. So if I take this out, we can now hold this in our hand. And as you can see, we've got a visual representation there. We have another blades and but how do we switch these blades? If we hold down shift, and then scroll just as you would with changing anything on your bar if you hold shift and scroll you will see that we're actually going to be changing blades now of course I've got two of the same blades so I'm doing it right now and you can't see any visual representation that's because it's switching between two different types of the same blade but when I go to the diamond one as you can see here it switches out now unfortunately that is all the upgrades when it comes to the buzzsaw there is no way of increasing its speed any further which is a little bit disappointing but it's a pretty cool item Next up, we have a tool that's probably going to be useful for getting around your base or between bases if you have a power plant. This is a sky hook. The sky hook is made with two wooden grips, one iron mechanical component and three steel ingots. Now, the way the sky hook works, if I fly up here, is a way of actually traveling along your wires around your base. If I jump and right click, it's a little bit finicky sometimes. If I jump and right click, we now attach. And if we hold down W, we can see that I'm now going across the base and it, the speed will increase over time. And obviously, if you're going on a bit of a decline it will go a bit more as you can see you automatically jump between connectors now you can go forwards if i hold s you can start going backwards and if you look to the side you can also go hold d or a to go left and right it's a pretty good way of probably doing a little bit of makeshift scaffolding although what you can't do is if you suddenly switch off your skyhook you will fall off your line 
Now, just for demonstrations, we've got a little bit of a line here. If I right click just directly on it when I'm standing, it doesn't really work. So it really has to be above you, which is why it's a little bit finicky. But we do pick up speed rather fast. Now, notice that once you get to the end of a line, you automatically get popped off the end. So make sure you aren't over anything very high. The last thing is, as it says, if you need to hold left shift to actually dismount as if it was, you know, a boat. And apparently it's put me on top of it. Well, now is the moment you've all been waiting for how to make the revolver and all its different ammo types. First, we're going to need a couple of components. First, a revolver drum. This is made with four steel ingots around the sides and a steel mechanical component on the inside. And you'll get one of these. Next, you're going to need the revolver barrel, which just requires two steel rods and they will just give you one barrel. And then lastly, you'll need the revolver hammer, which is made with five steel ingots like this. And this will give you the revolver hammer. Putting it all together, you need the revolver on the hammer on the left, on the right, sorry, the revolver revolver drum in the center, revolver barrel on the sides, you'll need two wooden grips on the bottom and then some iron ingots on the top and bottom here and this will give us our revolver. Now the revolver itself you can fire it without anything in it as you can see by pressing right click you have a bit of a cooldown for when you can fire next. You can also beat anyone if you wanted with left click. Now to open up you hold shift and right click this will give you a UI showing where you can put your bullets. So now we need to actually know how to make these bullets. Going over first, we're going to go over the common bullets you can make. For this, you're going to need the engineer's blueprint of common projectiles. This is created using three blue dye, one empty casing, two gunpowder, and three paper on the bottom, as you can see here. Now this blueprint, we've discussed how blueprints work before, but they go inside of these engineer's workbenches. Now to make that casing, we are going to need five different copper plates, just like this in a sort of V shape, and this will give us five empty casings. So let's take a load of those. Now for common projectiles there are only four different types. We have capsule cartridge, buckshot cartridge, armor piercing cartridge and silver cartridge. Now every projectile inside of immersive engineering is going to need some sort of empty cartridge or shell in order to actually craft as well as gunpowder. Now there are two different types of empty shell. Here we've got some empty casings and then we actually have the empty shell itself which is more of a shotgun variant one here. And this is created using two red dye four pieces of paper and one copper plate and this will also give you five empty shells so these are the only different types of empty shells that you get inside of immersive engineering now starting off with our first bullet is the capsule cartridge this inside of here is going to obviously require one empty casing and any gunpowder and this is actually going to require two lead nuggets now i mean two if we place one in here it doesn't work and we can't place two anywhere else they have to be stacked on top of each other and this will give us one capsule cartridge you can see here so you'll need a lot of lead nuggets if you want to do a lot of shots now the capsule cartridge will take 10 health away from an enemy that is 10 hearts not just 10 damage it's 10 hearts away from an enemy with a direct hit Next up, we have the buckshot cartridge. This is made using the empty shells you see here, obviously gunpowder, and this time two steel grits. Now the same applies, you can't have this in any other place, they have to be stacked on top of each other. Now the way the buckshot cartridge works, it's very similar to the capsule one, except it's gonna actually fire a cluster of projectiles and actually break apart, giving it a wider cone spread. It works best at short ranges, as the further away something is, the less damage it's gonna receive. Next up we have the armor piercing cartridge. This is made using two steel nuggets and two steel constantan nuggets. And now the armor piercing cartridge does the exact same damage as a regular capsule, but if your enemy is wearing armor, it can now get through it. So say a skeleton is wearing iron armor, this will now just cut through the iron armor and now give 10 health directly to the enemy. Now the last common projectile is the silver cartridge. This is made using two lead ingots and only one silver nugget. Now as you can see, because the regular capsule cartridge requires two lead, that's why it's also showing up inside of here. The only difference is the silver bullets as you hear the silver nuggets give us the silver cartridge now the silver cartridge i believe also does just do 10 health i can't find anywhere online to say otherwise except it, it does more damage against the undead so skeletons zombies or if you're using a mod that has wolves in it it'll do very well against wolves now sort of lying before there is one more sort of common projectile except it doesn't use a blueprint at all and this is the firework cartridge. Firework cartridge takes one empty shell and any type of firework rocket you've created and put it together it will give you a rocket. Now when firing this into the sky it's just going to give you the trail and explosion of whatever rocket you have created. This is just a standard rocket you can get from JEI. 
So now that we have our four common projectiles, how about we load up our revolver with each of these? You can only put one bullet in each slot. Obviously, you can't do a whole stack. Otherwise, that'd be a little bit OP. We'll go out of there and go around to our shooting gallery where we have a couple of friends that's going to help us out today. So you can see in the right there, we can see that we've got all our different bullets in our cartridge UI. But if I right click, it's going to use whatever is in the top slot of that UI section. So if I right click, you can see it revolves and nothing fires because obviously nothing was in there. Now, Next we have the silver bullets, the silver bullets won't do extra damage as these guys aren't on dead of course, but if I just shoot them, I actually missed there which is very awkward, but it actually attacked them. And they seem to get a little bit scared and wondered where that actually came from as well. If I shoot again, you can see it does a lot of damage and it appears that they will come for whoever is shooting at them even if they don't actually hit. Next is buckshot where we're going to do a bit of a wide range. This is one of my favorite ones because it does a lot of damage in a widespread, so you don't have to worry about missing. And then last we, we have here, which one's this one? The capsule, which will do 10 damage, so it should kill one of these guys. Oh, very close, but he died. I'm surprised he actually blew up considering I wasn't even in survival. Oh no, he looks like he's blown up part of the world as well. Now, just to demonstrate what we'll do is we'll take a firework cartridge, put it in the top. It doesn't have anything special in it, but if I just shoot that, obviously it just does it as normal. It doesn't propel you as if you were just, you know, firing a rocket. So it's not very good with an elytra or anything. Next up is now time for specialized projectiles. Now the specialized projectiles blueprint cannot be crafted. It can only be traded from a villager, an immersive engineering villager. However, everything when actually crafting these different items is the exact same. You're going to need either an empty shell or cartridge in order to create it, one piece of gunpowder and then whatever properties it requires. Starting off with a dragon's breath cartridge. This is going to require obviously the empty shells and stuff as well as four aluminium grits. The Dragon's Breath cartridge is going to be a buckshot cartridge, so there's going to be multiple projectiles and it will light things on fire in its path. Next we have the High Explosive cartridge. This is using one piece of TNT and this will obviously explode on impact. However, this will only damage mobs and will not actually damage the environment, so you can't break any blocks with it. Next up, we have the flare cartridge. The flare cartridge is made in three different ways. You can either make a yellow, green or red one. As you can see here, we've got all different types. As well as that, this will actually deal half a heart of damage to any mob if fired at them directly and will also leave a particle trail of whatever color you've decided when firing in the air. Next we have the homing cartridge, this is made using two lead nuggets and an ender eye and this is going to do exactly what it says, it's going to home in on the closest mob that it sees and will deal 10 hearts of damage when hit. Next up we have the file cartridge, this is going to require just one glass bottle. Now the file cartridge itself doesn't do anything, what you actually have to do is essentially fill up this file with any type of potion that you want. So you would take this file and let's take any potion. Let's just say fire resistance. If I now go into a crafting table, I can now put our file cartridge and any potion that I would like inside our file cartridge. This can then be loaded into our revolver here and can be fired at anyone I want. Now, when you actually hit someone, it's going to be like as if you splash damage them and it will hit them, give them a little bit of damage, but then will give them the effect. You can't, however, th fire it at the ground and splash damage yourself as you can't hit yourself with a revolver, of course. So if I fired this, as you can see, it splashed on the ground, but I do not have any effects. Now, lastly, we have got the wolf pack cartridge, probably the most powerful cartridge inside of this mod. This is going to require four homing cartridges in order to actually create. Now, the wolf pack is essentially a multi shot cartridge, a multi shot homing cartridge. So think of the buckshot, except now it home fires. It's very, very powerful. So now how about we load in our revolver. Now as you can see just a demonstration in case anyone was wondering you can't shift click any of these in you must actually place them in by hand. It's a little bit tedious but that's just how it works. So let's see how this goes like this this time. First being the flare so this won't do anything. If I fire that this is obviously a red one it just does a fire of a red streak. Fair enough. Now these guys are coming to chase me again of course. Now the homing cartridge, you don't actually want to fire directly at them really. You sort of want to fire away and then it will go and find them. And it did come down and hit one of them. This one right here, it hit this one here for half damage. Quite powerful. Now next up, I've created a file of weakening. And if I fire this one here without actually missing, you can see that he has now got the effect of weakness. Next up is the wolf pack cartridge. Now for this, it's similar. If you fired this directly at the enemy, they would actually just take all of one hit damage. But what you actually want to do is sort of fire at a wall, it'll break apart, and then it'll fly down and hit a specific target or multiple targets if they're all close enough. So you can see that did a, lot, a little bit of damage. 
Next up, the high explosives. Everyone seems to leave. They're scared of actually getting shot at. So if I do high explosive, it hits them. They explode, of course. But as you can see, no blocks are actually damaged. Now, the last one is Dragon's Breath, which we know is a buckshot. So this should actually set many things on fire. Now, unfortunately, guys, that is everything I have to show you when it comes to more advanced tools in immersive engineering. However, the revolver is not the only weapon inside of this mod. You can also get two different types of turrets, as you can see here, as well as a chemical thrower and a rail gun. But those are going to be happening in the future so if you did enjoy please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe that would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified for when all these tutorials are going to be coming out but until next time guys take care